Hello aspirants. Let's to discuss the current affairs of 10th February 2023. We have covered all the topics from newspapers and magazines including the Hindu, Indian Express, down to Earth, PIB and others to save your time so that after watching this video, you don't need to go anywhere else. In this video, we will be covering the following 8 topics. What is Kalbelia dance? Stone age paintings in Gurugram. Rabi cropping season. US bombed Nord Stream gas pipeline. Modes of losing Indian citizenship. Amorphous eyes. Asbestos. Small satellite launch vehicle SSLV D2. We will discuss why these topics made headlines in this video. So, let's get started. Our first topic is What is Kalbelia dance? This news card highlights the story of Suva Devi, a famous Kalbelia dancer from Rajasthan. The Kalbelia dance is a traditional dance form originating in Rajasthan that is performed by the nomadic Kalbelia tribe who are known for their snake charming. This energetic and sensual dance showcases intricate footwork and fluid movements of the body and arms. In 2010, UNESCO recognized the Kalbelia folk songs and dances of Rajasthan as part of its intangible heritage list. During a Kalbelia dance performance, women wear flowing black skirts with an angarkha and odni, both in mixed red and black hues and embroidered. The men play musical instruments such as the pungi, dholak, and others to create the rhythm. The dancers are adorned with traditional tattoos and jewelry. and their clothes are decorated with mirrors and silver threads as the performance continues both the pace of the dance and rhythm become faster key features of the kalbelia dance include rapid footwork graceful swirling of skirts fluid hand and arm movements singing and the use of drums and cymbals in the musical accompaniment now our second topic is stone age paintings in gurugram recently Stone carvings dating back to the Paleolithic period or Stone Age have been discovered in the Badshahpur area of Tethar village in Sona, Gurugram. The petroglyphs include hand and footprints of animals and humans as well as basic symbols engraved on quartzite rocks. The majority of the carvings depict animal paws and human footprints with some being simple symbols with an unknown purpose. Rakhi Di in Haryana is the largest Harappan site in the Indian subcontinent and excavations are underway to understand its origins and progression from 6000 BCE pre-Harappan phase to 2500 BCE. Rakhi Di is believed to be a strong contender as the birthplace of the Harappan civilization which may have originated in the Ghaggar basin in Haryana and spread from there. Coming to our third topic Rabi cropping season The Union Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare has reported that while the acreage of wheat in India has exceeded last year's the increase in the 2020 to 2023 rabi season has only been marginal at 0.4%. During the rabi season which runs from October to March crops like wheat, barley, oats, chickpeas, linseed and mustard are grown. Wheat is a staple crop in India that requires a combination of cool weather, moderate rainfall, flat and well-drained plains, fertile soil, and access to irrigation, high-yield seeds, fertilizers, and modern farming equipment to grow. The top wheat-growing states in India include Uttar Pradesh, Punjab, Haryana, Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, Bihar, and Gujarat. India is the second largest producer of wheat globally and accounts for about 14.14% of the world's total production. The majority of India's wheat is exported to neighboring countries, with Bangladesh being the largest recipient in both volume and value. Now moving towards our fourth topic. US bombed Nord Stream gas pipeline. According to an American journalist, The bombing of the Nord Stream gas pipelines in September 2022 was carried out by the CIA. The Nord Stream pipelines transport natural gas from Russia to Europe through Germany and consist of two pipelines, 
the largest being Nord Stream 1 which runs through the Baltic Sea. Germany built the Nord Stream 2 pipeline to ensure a secure gas supply and to expand options, but it has not yet gone into commercial operation. The Nord Stream pipeline is important to Germany as it provides low-cost natural gas, making German products more competitive globally. The pipeline is also crucial for the European Union's heating needs, as it supplies nearly 40% of the EU's natural gas. For Russia, the pipeline is a way to navigate the economy despite sanctions from Western countries. The Nord Stream pipeline is owned by the Russian state-owned gas company Gazprom. Due to the Russia-Ukraine conflict, it was operating at 20% capacity, but in September 2022, the company fully cut gas flows for maintenance purposes. Currently, Russia supplies only 9% of Europe's pipeline gas, according to Bloomberg, a decrease from 40% prior to the conflict. Both pipelines, although not in commercial operation, had stored millions of cubic meters of gas. Now fifth topic is Modes of losing Indian citizenship According to government statistics, 160,000 Indians have voluntarily given up their citizenship since 2011. The highest number, 225,620, was recorded last year, while the lowest, 85,256, was in 2020. The Citizenship Act 1955 outlines three methods through which an Indian citizen can lose their citizenship, including renunciation by making a declaration and having it registered. However, during times of war in India, the registration process will be suspended until directed otherwise by the central government. If a male citizen renounces their citizenship, their minor children will also lose their Indian citizenship but they may regain it by making a declaration within a year of reaching the age of 18. If a citizen of India voluntarily obtains citizenship in another country, they will lose their Indian citizenship, with the exception being during times of war. The central government also has the power to strip an Indian citizen of their citizenship if they obtained it through fraudulent means or if they demonstrate disloyalty to the Indian constitution, trade with enemies during war are imprisoned in another country for two years within five years of registration or naturalization, or have lived outside of India for seven years. Coming to sixth topic. Amorphous ice. A new form of ice with the same density and structure as water has been created by scientists, opening up possibilities for further investigating water's enigmatic characteristics. This type of ice, called medium-density amorphous ice, is composed of water molecules in a random arrangement, with no discernible large-scale regularity in their position or orientation. Amorphous ice is a common occurrence in space, with nearly all ice in the universe being in the form of low-density amorphous ice, formed when water condenses onto dust particles. This type of ice is also found in comets. The disordered structure of the water molecules in amorphous ice is similar to that of a liquid. Coming to seventh topic. Asbestos. Recently, an outdated aircraft carrier carrying hazardous asbestos and other toxins was sunk by Brazil. It is a group of six minerals that naturally form heat-resistant fibers. Asbestos fibers are flexible and can withstand heat, electricity, and corrosion. This made it widely used as a building material during the 20th century due to its properties as a good electrical insulator and fire resistance. It was often added to materials such as cloth, paper, cement, plastic, and others to enhance their strength. The main sources of asbestos are Russia, Kazakhstan, and China, and it was once mined extensively throughout North America. On ships, Asbestos was utilized as a fire retardant, an insulator to protect sailors from the vibrations of the ship's engines. Health effects Asbestos is known to be highly toxic and carcinogenic. Inhaling or ingesting asbestos fibers can cause the fibers to accumulate in the respiratory or digestive systems, leading to inflammation and DNA damage from repeated exposure. Our last topic is 
Small Satellite Launch Vehicle SSLVD2. The ISRO has successfully launched the second version of the Small Satellite Launch Vehicle SSLVD2 from its Satish Dhawan Space Center located in Shrihrikota, Andhra Pradesh. The SSLVD2 was created to capture the growing demand for small and micro satellites. This launch vehicle can accommodate up to 500 kilograms of satellites for low earth orbits on a launch on demand basis. The SSLVD2 uses three solid stages, followed by a velocity trimming module, VTM, powered by liquid fuel, to place satellites into orbit. This provides affordable access to space with a quick turnaround time, the ability to accommodate multiple satellites, and requires minimal launch infrastructure. Hope you found this video helpful. Also, you can find the notes of this video in the current affairs course on Edurif. Link of the course has been provided in the description below. For your information, Edurif offers the most structured course on current affairs, offering daily, weekly and monthly current affairs at a single place. Please subscribe to our channel to get regular notifications of our daily current affairs videos and other updates. You can give us suggestions feedback in the comments section as well. Thank you.